Today I'm in Tasmania on the banks of the beautiful Tamar River to shoot a video training course with two of the great geological educators of our time. I met one of them when I was studying geology and the other one when I began teaching it as part of my YouTube videos. Their stories of how they became geologists and took on the mantle of training future mineral explorers are an inspiration to anyone who enjoys unravelling the mysteries of the earth. At the end of 1982, when I'd completed my undergraduate geology degree at Flinders University in Adelaide, I approached most of the other Australian universities that offered an honours program in economic geology. Then I went on holiday to do some gold prospecting, which is what I did for fun when I was 19. When I got back from that holiday, there was a stack of syllabus documents on my desk and there was a super enthusiastic message on my old tape recorded answering machine offering a program of mapping tin deposits in the North Queensland jungle from James Cook University. The voice on my answering machine belonged to Professor Roger Taylor. Selecting his honours course at James Cook University shaped the rest of my career. His irreverent and clear style of understanding economic geology taught me to see things clearly and disregard the clutter. Roger lives in Launceston now, where we are today, and I'm here to help him film a new training course with Dr Richard Lilly, who runs the National Exploration Undercover School at Adelaide University. So let's find out how these two great men of rock got interested in geology and how they came to Australia to teach it. So Roger, how did you get into geology? There's uh, two entirely different stories there. There's a short version from when I was standing in the enrolment queue at university, and there's a much longer version as to how I actually got to university in the first place. See, I come from a very working class background, and people wouldn't realise these days, but in that situation in England, we didn't know what a university was, never heard of it. Well, this is in the late 40s, right? It would have to be, because I was born in 1939. So to cut a long story short, you know, uh, the 11 plus sorted sheep from goats. I was declared a sheep at 11, sent to a school where none of my friends were. They all went to the goat school, you know, carpenters and that sort of thing. And at the end of all that, they gave you about, you know, some exam things. And if you were any good, you got eight subjects with glowing reports and they all went off to universities with their stockbroker fathers and God knows what, you know, as I was coming from the other side of the tracks. And my remarks were pathetic. <laughs> I only got five very low numbers which didn't include maths <laughs> and no languages and I had no concept of what I wanted to do. Headmaster called me in one day and said um, well he said surprisingly he said you've got five five subjects. I was in sports teams that's why I was there and he said there's one university in the country or University College of Leicester which has since become very famous that would accept people uh, with these rather <laughs> poor qualifications. And so I went and told my parents and we all went, oh, an interview was arranged. Uh, and the gentleman there is actually um, supposed to be a science person, but he was sick. Mm. So I had an arts person mm. and this arts person didn't know what he was talking about. Felt sorry for me and said, okay, you're in, you can come and do a science degree. So I'm enrolled for a science degree without maths, without physics, and I just passed chemistry. Mm. So the second story, which we could take as a separate one if you wish, we could take it from when I was actually lined up in a university enrolment queue. Anyway, I'm standing in the queue and to sign on, and the gentleman behind me, I should send a thank you card, I suppose, <laughs> said, uh, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm doing this, actually doing botany and zoology mm. and, and chemistry. I said, but I'll never pass chemistry. He said, well, you do realise if you fail one subject, you get thrown out. I said, no. <laughs> uh, I said, well, he said, uh, if you're serious, he said, Perhaps you should do geology. You know, it's much less difficult for maths and, and not true, of course. But So, okay, so I wrote down geology. Little did I know that was illegal. I couldn't do that. I hadn't been accepted to do that. Mm. <laughs> so this is, a seren this is all serendipity how I got into geology. Mm. So then um, I enrolled and after a few weeks, I actually enjoyed it, liked it. Had you done any geology before? No, not at all. No, I was completely alien to it. I had no concept of being a geologist. I was interested in fish of all things. And anyhow, <laughs> so after about, I don't know, a couple of months I rolled in and said, I want to do honours geology. And the geology gentleman looked at this and said, <laughs> no, you can't do that. You haven't got any maths, you haven't got any physics. Um, we can't, can't enrol you. As I was leaving the room, he said, well, I suppose if you did particularly well, we could 
talk about it again. That changed my life. Mm. So I went out and started actually working, and I topped the year. Mm. <laughs> I topped everything because I was working all of a sudden, you know. Yeah. And I went in and said, "You said." <laughs> well, I didn't actually say that because I'm not like that. One. I mm. said, "You know, can I?" And he said, "Well, I did say." I said, "He said, well, we'll give it a bash." He said, "I'm not sure you're going to make it, you know." Uh, and so I was in doing geology. I still wasn't enrolled in geology. I was there illegally. So I'm probably I'm probably not even qualified. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the uh, that's how I got into geology, mm. with pure serendipity. And you finished your undergrad. What did you do then? Did you go straight into a PhD, or did you work for a bit? No, I was very lucky. Uh, a visiting professor came from Peru or somewhere, somewhere overseas, and my girlfriend at the time and myself adopted him. You know, and he wagged a finger at me eventually and said, "No, listen, lad," he said. <laughs> You know, he said, if you ever get the chance to do higher degrees or higher subjects, do it, he said, because you'll, it'll serve you well in later life. Mm. I remembered that. And this application came in to go for a diploma in Imperial College, Royal School of Mines, London. Mm -hmm. And I filled it in. And they accepted me. To my amazement, it only took five people. Mm. <laughs> and my, my record was nowhere near as what you'd think for five people, you know. And then this is for... PhD or for a master's? No, it's just for DI, Diploma in Imperial College. DIC, Dick. <laughs> oh. I'm a complete dick. Yeah. <laughs> I've been so fortunate with really serendipity. It keeps happening to me. You know. I wanted to do a PhD and my elderly professor said, sorry, no room. I said, but I topped a year. He said, no, no, we, overseas students pay more money or whatever it was. Anyhow, he called me in about a week later and said, Taylor, he said, because that's the way they spoke. <laughs> he said, uh, I've been talking to Denya. I said, oh, really? Uh, it's Denya at the club. I said, really? He said, yes, yes, he's a fine fellow. And it seems they've got a mine in Cornwall somewhere and they could do with a bit of help. So um, I told them, you'll go and do a PhD down there. I said, oh, that's lovely. What am I actually going to do? He said, oh, I don't know. He said, get down there and get on with it. <laughs> and then um, that's where I met Ken Hosking, who sort of volunteered to be my supervisor at Camel School of Mines. And I really ad admired him, you know. I wanted to be like him. Mm. Just a youngster trying to find my way. So he had a big influence. And again, serendipity, he, he happened to be there. You know, and that was really good. And again, marching forward, promptly I came over to Australia and you know, working as a proper geologist out in the field, a bit of exploration. Do you remember what year you came over to Australia? Not mm, really, no, 60 something, like eight probably. So I worked at Abbot Foil and I had an underground experience, open cut experience, playing around with magnetometers and whatnot, all those sort of things. And then uh, I applied for a job at James Cook University, it came up. Well, James Cook was a university college, very lowly, you know, down the bottom of the spectrum. They only got about four applicants, I think. They didn't accept me. The first candidate turned it down. Mm. The second one had the audacity to die. I said, well, there's another one, Danny, and number three, we'll have him. Uh, so yeah. I became a uh, lecturer in economic geology at James Cook Uni. Anyhow, I'm doing all of that, and along comes a gentleman called Professor Bill Lacey. And he was a doyen and you know top respected person from Arizona, University of Arizona, I think, who decided he didn't want to see change. He also decided that Australian naked geology wasn't very good. He was right. And he said, um, I'd like to do an MSC course, and I'd like to do it up in Townsville. Mm. And he said, there's a young bloke up there who's gonna help me. It was me. He was the best geologist I've ever seen still. Mm. He knew about engineering geology, he knew about finance, he knew about companies, he knew about every aspect of geology you could possibly think of. You know. So we got an MSC course going. And it was him who said, um, what are you actually doing, Roger? And I said, well, I'm actually trying to see every tin deposit in the world because I want to be like Ken Hosking. Mm. And he said, well, OK, you know about tin deposits then. I said, well, a bit. And he said, well, I'll enrol you for a short course. Give a short course. So I gave a five-day short course on tin deposits. Mm. To which all these people turned up. Just an amazing influence. You know, I can't, uh, I can't thank him enough. He was a consultant, and he very graciously took me along on his job. So I was just also a rent carrying mm. the bags type person. No one wanted to know me, which is fair enough. But I was listening and learning, which is great. Mm. I remember going back to our ore textures thing, you know, we walked across the whole outcrop, all about 10 minutes walking, I suppose. And Bill sort of turned around and said, hmm, 
That was an interesting botanical alteration zone. I said, what? <laughs> Hadn't seen anything. So he knew a lot about alteration. He knew a lot about breccias. That's where I got my breccia love from also. MSC was obviously a turning point because that involved bringing in experts to tell the students, which I could listen to as well, yep. about whatever it might be. And at the same moment, really, a gentleman turned up from Irian Jaya from Erzberg and said, I've got all these geologists that need educating. He said, I, and, you know, I hear you know a bit about this, that and the other, and you're doing these MSc courses. He said, uh, I would like you to come and teach all these people something about economic geology. Hmm. I said, well, no, I'm not really doing that. I work at a university. But then he offered the university a huge sum of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got together a whole crowd of short courses to teach these people. And somewhere in all of that, I met up with Dr. Peter Pollard, who okay, was MS, he was a PhD student who became, we just became, you know, a team basically developing these short courses. Mm. Industry helped me with some finance. A lot of people helped with, you know, rocks and photographs. MSC students sent rocks in and we slowly built it mm. from there. You know, I've given this course with you a number of times. I teach aspects of it at university and the number of students who you know, you can have people who've got very limited geology and you can run through this with them and they get it. They get it, yeah. And you can have people who've been looking at rocks for 50 years. Yeah. And they go, ah, yeah, I get it, you know. Yeah. I love seeing uh, when I'm giving this course and you suddenly see the lights go on. <laughs> and they're going on at different times with different people. So, Dr Richard Lilly, can you tell me a bit about how you got into geology and ultimately how you met Roger and how you got interested in presenting this kind of material as coursework? Oh, look, I guess I used to enjoy skipping stones at the beach and every now and then there'd be one with a fossil in it. So that's kind of got what got me into geology in the first place. But I've always enjoyed physical processes, uh, you know, mountain building, rivers, beaches, that kind of thing. I uh, moved out to Australia in 2007 after finishing a PhD in the UK. There were no jobs. Um, moved to Mount Isa, my dream job of exploration, and probably around 2009, I think I got sent on a workshop course to Brisbane to do Rogers Gossens course. And that really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. I mean, even going to Mount Isa, even with a PhD, um, I thought I knew a little bit about rocks, but obviously a lot of the rocks in mineralized terrains, you know, whether it's sediment hosted or IOCG, they're not what you get taught at uni. So I spent a few years looking at rocks, but I was lost. I didn't really know what I was doing. And then went to Rogers or Textures course in about 2010 in Townsville. And that just completely changed how I looked at rocks. And I'd say it's, it was a pivotal moment in my career in the sense that I suddenly started to feel confident about what I was actually looking at. Because up until that point, you know, you'd be logging a rock and someone would tell you, right, that's a dolerite. And you're saying, but it's pink. <laughs> why, why am I calling this a dolerite? Oh yeah, it's albite alteration. What's albite? You know, no one teaches you that in the UK. And then got to know Roger a bit and went on his other courses. Um, obviously got Roger in to do some consulting on various projects and I think that's where our friendship, friendship grew and we ended up doing a lot of work together on some of the IOCG systems in Cloncurry. Um, then when I transitioned down to Adelaide to take a sort of more academic position for Mount Isa Mines, I, um, you know, obviously the interaction with Roger continued and we started looking at Mount Isa itself and getting to the bottom of some of the long held views on that deposit and that's really brought us to here and I guess Along the way, about six years ago, I started the Nexus program with Graham Heinsen, and that's become really popular. I guess the opportunity to do workshops and courses and short courses where it's not totally academic and you know you feel like you're intimidated and frankly feel a bit stupid because you don't know as much as the presenters. You know, I've always found Roger's method of teaching and just conversational and inclusive, and you know, it really comes through in the Ortex his book, but also. I enjoyed learning from Roger. It's actually influenced how I teach and that's influenced how Nexus has evolved. So, you know, Roger's been a big influence on me professionally, but also in, I guess, how I teach as well. So can you, you tell me a little bit about how Nexus works? What, what, what is Nexus? So Nexus stands for the National Exploration Undercover School. Um, originally, it was planned in 2015, 2016, as a replacement for the, the MTech courses, which is where the idea from the Minerals Council of Australia were the courses for people transitioning from university to industry. So filling that gap of perhaps what you don't get taught at uni to what the industry might want you to do. The MCA in 2015 said, look, we, we can't afford this now. Um, can you come up with a new idea, please, um, to all of the universities in the country that have been doing it? Graham Heinsen came up with the idea of a, a three-week summer school. 
and I guess between he and I, we populated it with what I thought was particularly relevant for exploration based on my experience in Mount Isa. You know, we, you know, no one gets taught about soil geochemistry or regolith or infill and alteration uh, during undergraduate. So to bring in a lot of these aspects um, into a three week summer school and, you know, obviously lots of fun stuff too, you know, um, and bringing together a cohort of 30 people from around the country, 30 students and a few early career industry and people from surveys. And the first year we did it, it was just a fantastic experience. We all really enjoyed it. It was a really good laugh. It was just a, a good three week experience. And then we, we've been doing it again every year since around 2020, we doing the online workshops and now we're sort of trying to do school outreach and workshops in Perth. And it's sort of grown a bit every year and I guess it's built up a good reputation with industry. Um, a lot of the people who have done the course have given us super positive feedback, which I'm very proud of. And I guess now Nexus is now looking at sort of trying to host sort of online learning so that people all around the world can access this information and just sort of see where it goes. All right, well, that meshes really well with what I've been trying to do on YouTube and sharing some knowledge uh, to people who wouldn't normally have access to it, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it's great to be here and start doing some of that for Nexus and with Roger Taylor and uh, let's make it happen. Yeah, thanks, Nick. It's great.